So I want, um, besides what I'm going to say, I also have something to read from Karen, who could be here. I read something from her dad as he said today. My dear Saba, whose hundredth birthday we just celebrated last year, passed away this week Sunday. Though his mind had slowed, he still had a quick wit and a great sense of humor to the end. I will always remember his hearty laugh. I have such great memories of dating back so far from when we used to live in Michigan and we would visit every summer, to when he and Safta were our landlords when we lived downstairs on South Bedford Drive, to when I lived with them in the summer of 1990, to so many other visits after moving away. I remember kicking a soccer ball with him in the front yard, having debates, listening to tales of his faux life as a baseball player. <laughs> I never tired of hearing him talk about how he and Safta Lizzie met and their love affair that was like out of a fairy tale. It's always sad when such a great person, someone you love so much, dies. <clears throat> but it's hard to feel sad about the way he died. It was not so quick that he caught people off guard without a chance to say goodbye. He did not suffer in pain. He still knew who his kids, grandkids, and some of his great-grandkids great were. He still had his dignity. And just as Safta waited, until I could tell, call the teller about Artisboro, when first had her stroke, Safta waited until after we were able to celebrate Ari's great bar the weekend before he breathed his last breath. In a way, it's the end of an era. The, Sata, the, the Saba and Sata era. But when you look around and see so many generations of family, family that was so near and dear to them, it obviously is not the end of the era. I love you, Saba. Give my love to Saba. I'm Karen. Soon after Bennett and I started dating, he invited me to come and spend a case off with his family. You often hear that when you marry someone, you marry their family as well. For me, his family clinched the deal. <laughs> Thank you for that. There were so many wonderful cousins and aunts and uncles, and at the helm, these amazing grandparents. The amount of love, respect, and devotion in the family was abundantly clear, and I wanted to be part of it. Sapta Lizzie and Sapta Lefty embraced me, and all of a sudden I had a new, large, and wonderful family. Something I learned from Saba that will stay with me forever is the way he forged his relationships with his great-grandchildren. He always allowed Jacob and Ari and all of the kids to come to him when they were ready. If they were too shy to say hello or embrace him right away and people would try to usher them forward, uh, there, there was no judgment, only acceptance. They'll, they'll come when they're ready to come. When Sapta Lizzie died, Saba lost his soulmate and it was always evident just how much he missed her. I was worried that he would give up on life. Instead, he so clearly chose to live and to enjoy his beautiful family, and to be an amazing father, father-in-law, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Saba seemed to bring out the very best in people. Everything about Saba impressed me, from the way he climbed the stairs in his home until he was 100 years old, to his never-ending sense of humor, to his sixth sense and knowing ways. I'm so privileged to have known Saba, and I'm so grateful that our children have known the great Great grandfather. I'm here with Bennett and with all of you to celebrate the life of this amazing man with love, Karen. So, this is from my father in India. It's hard to think of Saba's life without thinking about Safta. There are memories of staying up late into the night with he and Safta as they help me work through crippling conflicts, painful conflicts, which I've carried since childhood. How welcome I felt in their apartment in Chicago from the time Judy and I lived there before we moved to New York. Welcome isn't the right word. Their naked inclusion of me in everything made it my home. There seemed to be no compartments in their life. Everything that flowed through it was part of everything else. Anyone who entered felt a part of it all, and were a part of it all. It was heaven itself. To come in touch with the alive, flowing currents of their lives was to enter the healing waters of the divine. It wasn't all ha-ha, the real deep issues of life and living and, and living it came openly into view. Their open engagement of them was a teaching to all those who were blessed with experiencing it. To go through the passages of joy, pain, concern, worry, and experience the naked pulses of life and become permeated with love and living. 
So many were affected by it, hundreds, and they in turn dealt more compassionately with those they encountered in their lives. Saba was a tuning fork of sanity. His unwavering caring, his deep concern for my welfare always affected me. For those who have been questioned by Saba on any issue, know how he had an uncanny way of unrelentingly descending into detail and getting to basic issues, to distilling complex, stress-producing situations to their basic workable elements, to helping you get through internal turmoil. What a great life he had. He and Sampa gave me a chance at life that I had never had before. Together and separately, they were the most special people I have ever known. I now, in this last phase of my life, am involved in lifting much suffering, not only in my work with animals, but with people too. I have, through good fortune, had great teachers who have given me a deep understanding of life, which I can share with others in conflict and need. None of this, and I do mean none of this, would have come to be without them. They gave me the chance that I desperately needed. It is all theirs. And those that have been helped by me treat those that they encounter with more understanding and compassion. And that is Sapa and Sapta's too. And there are many more like me who came in contact with these special, special people, perhaps hundreds. And through them, the lives of countless others have been lightened. It's the interconnectedness of things. Too often, if one is kind and truly uplifting to another, we tend to not think beyond that. Namely, that the person was just, just uplifting to that one person but those whose light journey is lightened in turn pass it on to others. Sawa and Sapta's effect on the planet flows not only through their children and grandchildren, but through anyone who ever came in contact with them and through those others to all the lives they came in contact with. What a special life this was. What a blessing to the planet that he lived. So much suffering has been lifted by this simple, ordinary, humble man of unimpeachable integrity, unwavering honesty, pure sincerity, pure heart. Dear, dear Eddie, my belief is that consciousness continues, that one reaps the fruit of their actions, it is called karma. So I believe that he is in a very, very good place of joy, of happiness. I believe that he is hearing the readings of these messages. Thank you, thank you, Saba. May you, may you again, perhaps at this very moment, be with your beloved listening.